Hi, and welcome to another episode of Develop with WP. Uh, today we are going to, man, that was a horrible entry. <sighs> okay, I'm not stopping. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> today we're going to cover modular code. Uh, I mentioned it previously uh, a few videos ago that with this plugin we're going to have multiple files and um, and that's that's a preferred method when building a plugin, especially if it's of any size, is to make your code more modular. So what we're going to do, do today is we're going to set the groundwork for that uh, and just show you a basic example of how to include multiple files into your plugin. So let's get started. If I go to terminal, I'm in my job listings plugin directory in my plugins directory. <laughs> and uh, uh, you'll see I just have the one main file that we've been creating. So what I want to do is I want to create a few more files. Uh, I had a name for this. Okay, render admin. These are really long names. Uh, I'm sure there are some naming conventions. I know there is about how to properly name uh, your files and whatnot, but this is what I'm going to go with for now. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I am aiming to do here is be descriptive. So if you look at my my new files, I have one called WP Job CPT. CPT is short for Custom Post Type. So if you were looking at my code as another developer, you should be able to uh, determine that the registering of my post type and potentially my taxonomy is probably in that folder. Render admin probably has something to do with rendering something within the admin. And in this case, later on, it's going to be a settings page that we're going to be creating. So that's kind of what I've done here is just try to be descriptive with what these files are so that, you know, future developers, if they were to get this plugin or wanted to do some, make some changes to it, they would be able to navigate around my file structure and find the necessary code that needed to be changed. All right. Uh, now that I have all of these files, what I want to do is open up uh, all of them in my code editor. So if you see right here, now you can now see all of the files. And only one of them has anything in it because that's our main file. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. The custom post type one, we need to populate with the custom post type data. And so what I'm going to do is just copy all of this, including the taxonomy. I'm going to do a cut and then I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to save. Now, this looks kind of dumb right now because there's nothing in here and even here in a minute there's only going to be I think one line of code. Uh, but this will make more sense later. This main file in our plugin is going to be used for things like enqueuing scripts, uh, pulling in all the different files that we do create. Uh, if we do some one-off functionality type things like register a settings page, you know, we'll register it here, but then we'll create it elsewhere. Uh, things like that. So as we move along, this uh, main plugin file is going to become uh, more populated with with stuff. So I know it looks a bit dumb now, but just just bear with me. All right. So if we go back to our our website, job listings exist. If I refresh, oh, I got. <laughs> let me go save this file that we deleted everything from, and refresh. All right, so I get no errors, obviously I shouldn't, but the job listings disappeared. And the reason it disappeared is because while this file is here and it's in my plugin directory, my plugin doesn't know what to do with it or that it even exists. So what we need to do is include this file into our um, main file. And there's a couple of ways. If you look up within PHP, there's include and there's require. There's also include once and require once. And so there's a there's four different ways you could pull a file in, and it's totally up to you depending on um, what you're trying to do. Uh, I'll cover real quickly, but I do want to point you to this this article that really does a very good job of describing the difference between all all four different ways to call in a file. So I would definitely uh, check that out. I'll have it in the description. But in essence, uh, the difference is is that if you do include which is right here. If you just do include and then the file, it's going to allow you to include it. Um, but if it doesn't exist, it's not going to throw an error. It's just going to act like it's not there, which I may show you here in just a second. But if I do a require, 
if this file doesn't exist, it's actually going to throw a fatal error and not error and not let the page load. So uh, why would that? Why would you use those? Uh, if it's not a big deal whether the file gets there or not, if it's not going to kill your application, then you could just use include. Um, but if if this file is absolutely necessary, then you're going to want to use a require so that if it doesn't, if the file is not found for some reason, that it causes a fatal error. Uh, and that's what we're going to do uh, here. So let's do that. So let's just do require and then our file which is cpwp job dash cpt dot php all right now let's go back to our thing and you'll see job listing is back right um, which is good uh, I was going to show you that fatal error. So if I were to do like this, because this file doesn't exist, and I refresh, I get a fatal error, right, saying that that you know it couldn't find the file. Uh, whereas if I had made this an include, we're still getting an error. Failed to open. Oh, you know, I think this is because <laughs> I have a uh, I have debug on, so it's gonna throw me an error anyway. But uh, but normally you wouldn't see it. And just to show that include works the same way as require as far as pulling in the the content. Um, oh yeah, that is a no. I I did. You couldn't see it on your screen. Let me go back. Anyway, let me just cover this really quick. As you can see, by using an include, it also lists the job listings just the same way they're required. So they both do the same thing. It's just whether or not you get an error. So let's do this again. If I change the name to something that doesn't exist with an include and I do refresh, you'll see I get errors. But you'll see that my page still rendered. Whereas when I did the require, I don't think it did. Yeah, so on the require, nothing happens. Like the page doesn't load. Okay, so there is a big difference. The only reason we're seeing the errors again is because I have debug on, which you should always do. All right, so let's change this back to what it's supposed to be. And now we're going to take this one step further um, because just putting require isn't really um, best practice. And the reason it's not is because uh, you're not really showing an absolute path to your plugin. Uh, with WordPress, you know, it's possible that your plugin could end up in a number of different locations uh, that aren't the normal just file structure to the plugin. So WordPress has, we have something that we can use called Plugin Dir Path. And we're going to want to use that here. So we'll do require, and then we're going to type in, uh, in parentheses, plugin underscore dir underscore path. And we're going to put underscore, underscore, file, underscore, underscore. And, oh, i got to do one more thing. And we're going to concatenate this. So pretty much what this is doing, let me make sure I didn't mess it up. Yep, so it's still there. Everything looks good. What this is doing is it's saying, hey, you know, I want this file, but I want you to pull the whole path down to here and then do this file. And if I had subdirectories within this, I could also have, say this was in an include folder, I could do then dot include blah, blah, blah. So this just ensures that we're always pulling to the correct um, path. And one of the things I wanna show is if I do a var dump, actually let's do this. So just to show again, this does work. This is the, this is the end result, this is what you want require or include or actually uh, require once which is what I'm going to use um, again look at that article to figure out which ones you want to use but this this works this is the proper way this is what's going to be in our code I do want to take one quick tangent and review this plugin dir path um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called dir and make it equal to plugin dir path file so what this is doing is whatever plugin dirt path file pulls is now in this variable. And we're going to look at this variable so we can see what it what's in there. So I'm going to do a var dump. Um, 
to see this. And all I'm going to do is put in my dir variable, save it. Uh, I'm also going to do a die. And now when we refresh, we'll see what that exists, what exists there. And you'll see that it's SRV slash www slash sandbox, which is my site, slash ht docs, da 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 da. So it lists out the whole path all the way to my plugin directory. So no matter where we place this plugin within the file system, plugin dir path file is always going to map it correctly to where it's at so that we never have any errors with files not loading and whatnot. All right, so I just wanted to show that to you. Uh, and it's also worth noting that this is in the codex plugin dir path. Um, and there are some other ones like a plugin base name. There's some other similar um, functions within WordPress that you can use that, that are like this. All right, so what I want to do is fix my plugin. All right. <clears throat> So that's really it for this video. I did create another file that we're not using right now, which we will later. Um, and again, it's, this is just going to be a list of where I'm going to continue to require files as this plugin uh, grows. So again, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was informative. I hope it cleared up a little bit of the uh, uncertainty about how to include different files in your plugin. Uh, be sure to check out that article. It does a very, very good job of explaining all the different, all the four different ways to include. Um, a file within using PHP. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. The next video we're going to going to start uh, creating our custom meta boxes and fields for our custom post type. So again, thanks for watching this video and have a great day.